welcome to the third lecture of the course Introduction to Brain and Behavior. I am Ark Verma, I am an assistant professor. Hello and welcome to the third lecture of the course Introduction to Brain and Behavior. I am Ark Verma, I am an assistant professor of psychology at the Department of Humanities and Social Sciences in IIT Kanpur. I am also attached to the uh, interdisciplinary program in Cognitive Sciences at the institute. In the last two lectures, uh, we have talked uh, very briefly about uh, some of the uh, background developments uh, that led to uh, formation of this interesting field called cognitive neuroscience. Uh, in the first lecture, we talked a little bit about uh, the developments uh, in neuroscience specifically. Then we talked a little bit about uh, some of the developments in psychology and uh, uh, eventually we also talked a little bit about some of the rudimentary earlier methods that were used uh, or would be used in cognitive neuroscience. And today's uh, lecture uh, onwards, we will already start talking uh, a little bit in detail uh, in very short pieces although uh, about the structure and the function of how the nervous system is organized. So the first lecture uh, in this uh, series is the third lecture of the uh, week and it will basically talk a little bit about neurons. So, I will immediately jump uh, to what neurons are. Now, neurons are these basic signaling units or these simple cells that, uh, that combine to form the brain, uh, but we will talk about them uh, as, as uh, signaling units that transmit information throughout the nervous system. So, they are the cells that are mainly responsible for generating and transmitting uh, uh, information uh, in reaction to uh, any kind of physical or chemical stimulation that is that may be available. So, neurons take in information, they make a decision about uh, whether this information has to be passed further or not passed further and so on. They make a decision and then uh, they pass the same on to the other neurons. Okay? We will talk about them in uh, these things in detail uh, going further, but I am just giving you a brief uh, idea. So, neurons uh, also vary in their form, in their location, where all they are uh, existing and the patterns of interconnectivity within the nervous system. So, there are uh, probably uh, you know neurons of different kinds and shapes uh, across different parts of the brain and the entire nervous system. Another interesting uh, kind of uh, cells that are available uh, within the nervous systems are glial cells. Uh, although which are non-neural cells, but they serve very important functions like providing structural support and electrical stimulation to these neurons and also sometimes modulating the electrical activity throughout these neurons. Let's move further. This is just a bit of a, an idea of uh, different kinds of mammalian neurons that have been documented. You can say for example, see uh, on the top uh, left as a hippocampal uh, neuron, the mouse neuron, spinal cord ganglia and so on. So, this is this is something which is just, just a bit of a demonstration uh, source from Gazaniga's book. Now, just keeping things uh, slightly simple, a neuron has uh, basically three very important parts. One is the cell body that you can see in the center. Uh, it is called cell body or soma. Uh, then you can see these uh, projections around the cell body which are called dendrites. You can see this long fiber which is called the axon. At the end of this long fiber are these terminals which are called the axon terminals. I will talk to you about what each of these do now. So, the cell body uh, is uh, like uh, the engine of the cell, uh, of any cell for that matter, which carries out chores like uh, um, uh, ribs, uh, you know, right, the production of different kinds of proteins and other macromolecules which are responsible for uh, the metabolism that is carried out in the cells. Uh, the dendrites and the axons are just extensions of the cell membrane, uh, but they serve very important uh, functions of receiving and then transmitting this electrical signal throughout the body of the neuron uh, to the other neurons. Let's go a little bit. Uh, let's go in a little bit of more detail. Uh, the cell body, or the soma as they call it, uh, contains the metabolic machinery uh, of the uh, of the cell. So it includes uh, nucleus, uh, the endoplasmic reticulum a cytoskeleton, mitochondria and the Golgi apparatus and other kind of in, uh, uh, common intracellular organelles that uh, you might uh, already be aware of from your biology class. Now, these structures are suspended in this uh, uh, salty uh, intracellular liquid called the cytoplasm, uh, which is composed of ions of uh, three main kinds of molecules and some proteins as well. These three molecules are very, very important. You should remember them. They are calcium molecules, sodium molecules, uh, potassium molecules and chloride ions. So, all of these, uh, these uh, uh, ions uh, combine to form this intracellular liquid called the cytoplasm. Now, the neuron 
also is, uh, is resting uh, in this extracellular environment or in this extracellular fluid which is also made up of a mixture of the same type of uh, ions. Okay. So, the inside and the outside is, is very similar uh, material, it is the same fluid material which is composed of these uh, ions which are of potassium, sodium, uh, uh, calcium and chloride. All right. Now, neurons uh, as they are very important, they are special cells, they possess unique cytological and physiological properties that enable them to transmit and process information rapidly. Now, when I am saying information at this point, you should just make a mental note that I am talking about information in terms of chemical and electrical activity. How, how does that really uh, play out, we will see in detail moving further. The dendrites, these projections that you can see on top of the cell body are basically uh, responsible for receiving inputs from other neurons and uh, they receive these inputs and because they have to receive these inputs, they can take uh, any kinds of shape. You will basically, if you look into, uh, if you go on Google and just, uh, you know, uh, try and find out different kinds of shapes that uh, dendrites uh, take, you will be amazed. Uh, and then similarly, there is this, uh, this uh, long fiber, the axon that you are seeing. The idea of axon, the, the, the responsibility of the axon is to sort of allow the electrical signals that are generated or received from other neurons uh, to, uh, you know, to let those electrical signals travel along the cell body and then uh, transmit them to other neurons. Now, this, now the transmission of these electrical signals uh, from one neuron to the other happens at a particular site called the synapse and you can see this uh, here in the figure. The synapse is a specialized structure, it is a specialized place where two neurons come close enough to each other such that any kind of chemical or electrical uh, messages or signals can be passed to and, th uh, to and fro. Okay. So, the idea is typically there is uh, the organization is like one of the neurons that is passing the signal is referred to as the presynaptic uh, neuron and the other uh, neuron that is receiving the signal is called post synaptic neuron, but we will talk about that uh, as we move further. For now, you have to just remember that a synapse is the place where this transmission of uh, electrical or chemical signal from one neuron to the other is going to take place. Now, there is a very important property of uh, these uh, axons that we sort of um, uh, want, I sort of wanted to mention is that this uh, layer of axon is covered with a fatty substance, with a layer of a fatty substance which is called myelin and this layer is called the myelin sheath and this myelin is basically uh, there are some of, there are these gaps at uh, regular intervals in this myelin sheath which basically what it does is it ensures the rapid transmission of the electrical signal along the body of the axon. It is sort of an insulating material that uh, that allows the electrical signal to fast uh, to uh, pass very quickly from the uh, top of the axon to uh, its bottom uh, to where the axon terminals lie. Uh, so, this is this is uh, something again which is uh, something that you should remember. Now, let us come uh, and uh, start discussing a little bit about the signaling that I have been talking about. Now, the process of uh, receiving, evaluating and uh, transmitting information is uh, referred to as neuronal signaling and it happens uh, both uh, within neurons and across neurons. So, for example, a signal could be generated within the cell body, within the neuron and then it could be passed on to other neurons via transmission throughout the length of the axon and it could basically be just received from another neuron and passed on along uh, uh, the cell body along the axon to other neurons. So, it can happen across neurons as well as within neurons. Now, uh, when this has to happen within a neuron, the changes in the electrical state of the neuron will have to happen and uh, will create a sort of an electrical impulse that would then pass down the length of the axon. So, this is when the, uh, the transmission is happening within the neuron. However, mostly this electrical activity needs to be uh, communicated with other neurons as well. So, uh, when, it, uh, when this neuronal signaling is supposed to happen between the neurons, what happens is information or this uh, signal uh, transfers uh, basically um, across uh, at the synapse and is mediated by uh, chemical and or electrical signals. So, uh, basically the exchange of information that we uh, saw in the figure here, this is basically an example of uh, uh, some kind of information exchange chemical or electrical happening at the synapse between couple of neurons.
neurons can be uh, therefore, uh, as I was saying, can be referred to I as either presynaptic or postsynaptic neurons. But uh, again, as uh, I would like you to note, is that the neurons are, do not just have single connections. I mean, they might be connected to many uh, uh, neurons at the at uh, the same time. And in that sense, every neuron can be looked at as both a pre and a post synaptic neuron at once because it is probably receiving a signal from another neuron through its dendrites and then passing on the same signal to another neuron through its axon terminal. Uh, it is a pre synaptic neuron uh, for uh, one case and a post synaptic neuron in the other case. So, it is basically relative to what signal processing you are talking about a neuron can be uh, considered pre or post synaptic neuron. Now, uh, how is this signal generated, this uh, thing that I have been talking about, what is this whole concept of electrical and chemical signal being generated? Let us uh, start talking about it and one of the first concepts we can uh, sort of discuss here is this whole concept of the membrane potential. So, let us look a little bit more closely at the generation and transmission of this of these electrical signals that we are talking about. Uh, let us look at some of the basic facts uh, to begin with. So, an electrical signal is generated as a result of the difference in the voltage across the neuronal membrane. So, this neuronal body, uh, there is a voltage difference across this body and also between the inside and the outside of the neuron. Okay? So, if you remember the extracellular material is also cytoplasm uh, like material, the inside is the cytoplasm material which is both, both of these are constructed with the uh, same kind of ions. Okay. So, these two voltages basically and this creation of these voltages, the inside voltage and the outside voltage uh, depend upon the concentration of the kind of ions, potassium, sodium, calcium uh, uh, and chloride ions, the different, uh, con uh, they, they exist in different concentrations inside and outside of the neuron and this difference in concentrations basically uh, leads to build up of these voltages. Now, when a neuron is not actively signaling or passing information from itself to the other neuron uh, or electrical signals. So, uh, basically the exchange of information that we uh, saw in the figure here, this is basically an example of uh, uh, some kind of information exchange chemical or electrical happening at the synapse between couple of neurons. Uh, Neurons can be uh, therefore, uh, as I was saying, can be referred to I as either presynaptic or postsynaptic neurons. But uh, again, as uh, uh, I would like you to note, is that the neurons are, do not just have single connections. I mean, they might be connected to many uh, uh, neurons at the at uh, the same time. And in that sense, every neuron can be uh, looked uh, uh, looked at as both. A pre and a post synaptic neuron at once because it is probably receiving a signal from another neuron through its dendrites and then passing on the same signal to another neuron through its axon terminal. Uh, it is a pre synaptic neuron uh, for uh, one case and a post synaptic neuron in the other case. So, it is basically relative to what signal processing you are talking about. A neuron can be uh, considered pre or post synaptic neuron. Now, uh, how is this signal generated, this uh, thing that I have been talking about, what is this whole concept of electrical and chemical uh, signal being generated? Let us uh, start talking about it and one of the first concepts we can uh, sort of discuss here is this whole concept of the membrane potential. So, let us look a little bit more closely at the generation and transmission of this, of these electrical signals that we are talking about. Uh, let us look at some of the basic facts uh, to begin with. So, an electrical signal is generated as a result of the difference in the voltage across the neuronal membrane. So, this neuronal body, uh, there is of these electrical signals that we are talking about. Uh, let us look at some of the basic facts uh, to begin with. So, an electrical signal is generated as a result of the difference in the voltage across the neuronal membrane. So, this neuronal body, uh, there is a voltage difference across this body and also between the inside and the outside of the neuron. Okay? So, if you remember the extracellular material is also cytoplasm uh, like material, the inside is the cytoplasm material which is both, both of these are constructed with the uh, same kind of ions. Okay. So, these two voltages basically and this creation of these voltages, the inside voltage and the outside voltage uh, depend upon the concentration of the kind of ions, potassium, sodium, calcium uh, uh, and chloride ions, the different, uh, con uh, they, they exist in different concentrations inside and outside of the neuron and this difference in concentrations basically uh, leads to build up of these voltages. Uh, 
Now, when a neuron is not actively signaling or passing information from itself to the other neuron, uh, as the resting potential of the neuron. So, just uh, uh, quickly remember this. So, this is basically referred to as the resting potential of the neuron, which is around minus 70 millivolts. It is this potential difference of minus 70 millivolts uh, is what is utilized as a source of energy to generate an impulse and to pass on that impulse from one neuron to the other. We will talk about how that happens in much more detail as we go further. Now, how does this happen? How does this membrane potential build? So, let us look into uh, this a little bit more uh, deeply. Uh, now, the bulk of this neuronal membrane that we are talking about, this, uh, this uh, uh, voltage difference across this body and also between the inside and the outside of the neuron. Okay? So, if you remember the extracellular material is also cytoplasm uh, like material, the inside is the cytoplasm material which is both, both of these are constructed with the uh, same kind of ions. Okay. So, these two voltages basically and this creation of these voltages, the inside voltage and the outside voltage uh, depend upon the concentration of the kind of ions, potassium, sodium, calcium uh, uh, and chloride ions, the different, uh, con uh, they, they exist in different concentrations inside and outside of the neuron and this difference in concentrations basically uh, leads to build up of these voltages. Now, when a neuron is not actively signaling or passing information from itself to the other neuron, uh, oscillating and is not allowing uh, exchange of either uh, chemicals or electrical charge from inside and outside, but then there are avenues, there are these uh, things called transmembrane proteins which are uh, provided across this membrane. Uh, which basically serve as, as ways or opportunities or avenues of movement of ions across this neuronal membrane. Now, this is, this is the very, very important part which I would uh, like you to remember and uh, process in some more detail. Now, there are two main kinds of proteins that allow for the uh, crossing of uh, ions from the inside to the, to the outside or from the outside to the inside of the neuron. Uh, first of them is called the ion channels. Now, these ion channels basically in uh, neurons are either selective, are basically selective uh, and they are selective for either sodium or potassium or calcium or chloride ions. So, they are uh, particular different kinds of ion channels which are uh, sort of suited to allow uh, specific kinds of ions to pass inwards or outwards from the neuronal membrane. So, this characteristic of these ion channels being selectively permeable to a specific kind of ions enables the neuron to maintain the internal chemical stability. So, for example, if some of the ions have gone out which are disturbing this whole thing, uh, a different channel will allow the same kind of ions to enter back in to restore this minus 70 millivolts that we have talked about earlier. Now, this neuronal membrane, why is this more, uh, I mean, the, the, it, it has this unique property of being more permeable to soda, to potassium ions as opposed to sodium ions and this is this property that contributes to maintaining this resting potential, okay, because as you might be aware of your elementary chemistry that more of these uh, soda, potassium uh, ions uh, uh, basically they take out so, uh, basically the more of these uh, potassium ions uh, uh, selective channels are there uh, than for any other kind of uh, ion. So, uh, more of these potassium ions are allowed to go outside as opposed to the other kind of ions. Okay. Now, these channels can uh, come in two kinds. Uh, one of them is called the gated ion channels. Now, these gated ion channels are special channels which can change their permeability uh, for a particular ion or open and close on the basis of changes in the neuronal on the uh, nearby transmembrane charge or if there is some kind of physical or electrical or chemical uh, stimulation. The other kind of ion channels are called non-gated ion channels which almost allow a free pass uh, to ions of these specific kinds to go in and out through these particular channels. So, there is a combination of these channels uh, which basically allow uh, for uh, sometimes selective, sometimes unrestricted passage of ions from inside to outside of the neuron and vice versa. Another important, uh, another important kinds of transmembrane proteins are these ion pumps and these ion pumps basically are responsible for maintaining this, the difference of the concentration of ions across the neuronal membrane. Specifically, it is uh, observed that sodium and chloride ions are, great, are in greater concentration outside the cell whereas potassium ions are in greater concentration inside the cell. Now, to maintain this potential difference which we have been talking about, neurons basically use active transport proteins known as 
ion pumps. So this is what these ion pumps are supposed to do. What they do is uh, they use a sodium potassium pump that pumps out sodium ions and pumps in the potassium ions a process that is obviously it's basically because some kind of movement is happening it will, it will basically uh, utilize some kind of energy and that energy comes out of uh, the hydrolysis of the adenosine triphosphate molecules now uh, for each molecule of adenosine triphosphate that is hydrolyzed uh, three sodium ions leave and two potassium ions are pumped inside uh, the cell. So you can see that three positive charges are going inside but only two are coming inside which is going to create uh, this build up of negative charge inside the uh, neuron uh, as opposed to the positive charge that is going to be outside the neuron. Now this difference that becomes created uh, uh, of the inside and the outside voltages across the neuronal membrane is referred to as or we can call it as an electrical gradient. Now uh, as each K plus ion moving outside creates a negative charge as I have already mentioned. Now there are two kinds of gradients if you have noticed. Uh, there is this electrical gradient which is forming because of the difference in charge and there is <coughs> the gradient which is formed because of the difference in the concentration of the specific type of ions. So there are two gradients, electrical uh, uh, gradient and the ionic concentration gradient which basically are uh, sort of in opposition to each other. If the ionic gradient wants uh, uh, a sort of an equilibrium to be established, uh, the electrical gradient will get disturbed and so on. So they both sort of uh, in op are work in opposition to each other with respect to where these potassium ions should be. Uh, one sends these potassium ions uh, outside, the other wants these potassium ions inside. Now as negative charge sort of keeps building up inside this neuronal membrane, the positively charged potassium ions from the outside of the neuron are drawn electrically back into the neuron through the same sodium uh, selective ion channels. Eventually what it leads to is, the, uh, is that uh, the force of uh, you know the f eventually what it sort of leads to uh, because of the force of this concentration gradient uh, which pushes these sodium ions out. Uh, is that this force uh, uh, which is pushing the sodium ions out uh, becomes equal to the uh, uh, force of the electrical gradient which needs to push the potassium ions inside. So there are two kinds of gradients, one is pushing the potassium ions out, the other is pushing the potassium ions in and these two become sort of equal to each other and in, in a state where uh, both of these forces are uh, at an equal, uh, equal uh, standing is uh, referred to as the electrochemical equilibrium and this is where the, the charge that we are talking about uh, of this uh, membrane uh, or the resulting membrane potential is minus 70 millivolts. So this is, this is sort of the first part of this uh, uh, you know the section of uh, on neuronal signaling that I was uh, supposed to be talking about. This is how this minus 70 millivolts charge is obtained. In the next lecture, I will talk to you about the action potential and about the synapse which is basically how this charge is communicated through uh, and across the neuron. Thank you.